So they destroy the city, they put this cop in prison for the rest of his life. We all have to pretend he committed murder, which he didn't, but whatever, we have to pretend it. And then they leave and they move on to the next thing to destroy. Former Minneapolis cop Derek Chauvin was um, you know, convicted, convicted of murder in April of 2021. Um, to be convicted of murder, you have to do this thing called a standing trial. Right, where a jury of your peers hear evidence and then determine whether or not you are guilty of the charges that have been brought against you. In the case of Derek Chauvin, who decided to kneel on the neck of George Floyd long enough to the point where George Floyd died, was convicted of murder following that trial. Just wanted to give you that context that apparently Tucker Jones, uh, Tucker Jones, Mm. Freudian slip there. Uh, Tucker Carlson is pretending that he doesn't know anything about. Now, former police officer Derek Chauvin was convicted and sentenced to 22.5 years in prison, 22 and a half years in prison for state murder and manslaughter charges, as well as 21 years in prison for violating Floyd's civil rights. That's not something a leftist unilaterally decided. That's not something a member of BLM unilaterally decided. That is what a jury of Derek Chauvin's peers decided following evidence that was presented in a trial, he was found guilty. John, I'm just so sick of this garbage, right? Mm -hmm. where, where obvious lies, demonstrable lies are being sold to a huge portion of this country that just eats it up because they wanna eat it up. We live in the post truth world where we get to just believe whatever we wanna believe regardless of what reality entails. Yeah, yeah, then that's on the, the side of the audience. Of course, for Tucker Carlson, it's not even accurate to say that he thinks or doesn't think that it's murder. He doesn't care at all. He's not, he doesn't care that the guy died however he thinks he died. Um, and, it, and he's not worried about how easily, how easily you're able to disprove him. I mean, on both sides, the investigators have looked into it. It's clear that that's what killed him. It's common sense that that's what would kill a person. Seems like an interesting coincidence to die at that particular point. Um, it, it makes no sense, it falls apart instantly. It's like wet tissue paper, but he knows his audience is never gonna think about it for even a second. They're never gonna question him because they don't want to. They don't approach the question of whether it was murder or not. Wondering if it was and wanting to have their beliefs be in, in line with reality. They know that the cop in this case was good and the black guy who died is bad. Why? Um, Tucker Carlson has told them, but also, I mean, George Floyd is obviously involved with the George Floyd protests and they're clearly the worst people in history. So it's the easiest thing in the world to convince people of whatever you want in relation to it. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that Tucker Carlson is always going to be on the side of cops. He had no problem with Trump supporters trying to murder cops with their bare hands on January 6th. But his alignment almost always is with the state, the power of the state, because that's what upholds his economic position. He likes to pretend that he's some sort of every man, despite the fact that he's a multi-million dollar heir to a fortune. Um, and so it's, it's just funny that his audience can't see how often he's going to mindlessly and critically side with the cops in this particular case. Now, if you're wondering what the rest of that segment looked like, apparently earlier in that same segment, Carlson insisted that the medical examiner apparently determined that Floyd died from a fentanyl overdose. When in fact, the Hennepin County medical examiner and experts hired by Floyd's family each determined that his death was a homicide, a homicide. In fact, a homicide that we all witnessed, we all witnessed it together as it was happening. Okay, as that story was breaking, I should say. And Media Matters for America, by the way, put together um, basically like all the or multiple examples of Tucker Carlson um, floating this nonsense, even after the medical examiner Andrew Baker testified saying that Derek Chauvin kneeling on George Floyd's neck was in fact the cause of death. So let's take a look at the video that Media Matters put together. The law enforcement subdual restraint and the neck compression was just more than Mr. Floyd could take. It's striking how little we really know months later 
about how exactly George Floyd died. Well, you never hear anyone say it out loud. You're not allowed to say it out loud. But as a factual matter, we still don't know exactly how George Floyd died. We're still not precisely sure how George Floyd died. Why was George Floyd telling officers, I can't breathe? Well, here's one possible explanation. One of the primary symptoms of fentanyl overdose is, quote, slowed or stopped breathing. The story they told us about George Floyd's death was an utter lie. There was no physical evidence that George Floyd was murdered by a cop. The autopsy showed that George Floyd almost certainly died of a drug overdose, fentanyl. Dr. Baker concluded that George Floyd had so much methamphetamine and fentanyl in his system that if he had been found in his home, his death would have been ruled an open and shut overdose. No, okay, all right, Tucker, let's try it out. Let's try it out, um, come over and I will kneel on your neck for nine minutes and see what happens. You're not on drugs, right? You're not taking fentanyl, so let's just try it out. You should survive it, right? You should survive as long as you're not doing fentanyl. Me kneeling on your neck. By the way, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty petite, so maybe we, we find someone that's uh, more in line with Derek Chauvin's size, okay? And have that individual kneel on your neck for nine minutes and let's, let's see what happens. Let's I mean, see what happens. I've got some time this weekend I can carve out. Oh, I'd I'm love to see it. it, honestly. I mean, he might be right. Tucker Carlson might be right, guys. So let's try it out. Yeah. Nah, no, I mean, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't care. Lie. He doesn't yeah. care whatsoever. And, and look, honestly, like you're gonna, first of all, nobody is. Nobody's taking at face value without already having opinions of Tucker Carlson, anything that he says. These people will believe literally anything that he says. But you're supposed to believe that Tucker Carlson like goes with an open mind into all of these cases. Have you ever seen Tucker Carlson angry, infuriated by a cop murdering someone? Okay, maybe it's not maybe it's not in this particular case. Maybe it's not with George Floyd. Uh, but the cops murder literally hundreds of people every single year. He has hundreds of opportunities every year to have an issue with it. And he should have an issue with it. Since obviously he worships and admires cops, a cop doing something as terrible as murdering someone should infuriate him. If Bernie Sanders suddenly choked someone to death, I would be particularly angry about that because I look up to him. And yet, Unless for some reason- Unless he does it in a fun way. There are fun ways where that happens. I'm just, I'm putting that out there. But maybe continue. he's not busy this weekend either. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the fact that he has never once done a 30 minute monologue about how terrible it was that a cop murdered someone um, should make you uh, take with a massive grain of salt mm -hmm. any uh, supposed concern about fentanyl that he has in this case. Also, by the way, aren't you supposed to instantly die the second you touch literally anything with fentanyl on it? Right, like Derek right. Chauvin would have died from <laughs> knee contact in that case, considering what they think about fentanyl. I mean, I've seen cops nearly die just from opening a trunk that had fentanyl in it. So think about it. 